Alcestis by Euripides, translated by Arthur Sanders Way, eighteen forty seven to nineteen thirty. Part one. Apollo, being banished for a season from Olympus, and condemned to do service to a mortal, became herdsman of Admetus, king of Pherae in Thessaly. Yet he loathed not his earthly taskmaster, but loved him, for that he was a just man and hospitable exceedingly. Wherefore he obtained from the fates this boon for Admetus, that when his hour of death should come, they should accept in ransom for his life the life of whosoever should have before consented to die in his stead. Now when this was made known, none of them who were nearest by blood to the king would promise to be his ransom in that day. Then Alcestis his wife, the daughter of Peleus, king of Iolcas, pledged her to die for him. Of her love she did it, and for the honour of wifehood. And the years passed by, and the tale was told in many lands, and all men praised Alcestis, but Admetus bore a burden of sorrow, for day by day she became dearer to him, a wife wholly true, a mother most loving, and a lady to her thralls gentle exceedingly. But when it was known by tokens that the day was come, Admetus repented him sorely, but it availed not, for no mortal may recall a pledge once given to the gods. And on that day there came to the palace Apollo to plead with death for Alcestis' sake, and a company of elders of Pherae to ask of her state and to make mourning for her. And when she was dead, ere she was borne forth to burial, came Heracles, son of Zeus, in his journeying, seeking the guest's right of meat and lodging, but not knowing aught of that which had come to pass. Of him was a great deliverance wrought, which is told herein. Dramatis Personae Apollo, Death, Chorus, composed of elders of Pherae, Handmaid, Alcestis, daughter of Peleus and wife of Admetus, Admetus, king of Pherae, Eumelus, king of Admetus and Alcestis, Heracles, Pheres, father of Admetus, servant, steward of the palace, guards, attendants, handmaids, and mourners. The scene throughout is in front of the palace of Admetus at Pherae. Enter Apollo. Apollo, holds of Admetus, where I stooped my pride to brook the fare of serfs, yea, I, a god. The fault was fault of Zeus, he slew my son Asclepius, hurled the leaven through his heart. Wroth for the dead, his smiths of heavenly fire I slew, the Cyclops, and for blood atonement serf to a mortal man my father made me. To this land came I, tended mine host kind, and warded still his house unto this day. Righteous myself, I lighted on the righteous, the son of Pheres. Him I snatched from death, cozening the fates. To me the sisters pledged them that imminent death Admetus should escape, if he for ransom gave another life. To all he went, all near and dear, and asked Grey Sire, the mother that had given him life, but save his wife, found none that would consent for him to die and never more see light. Now in his arms upborne within yon home, she gaspeth forth her life, for on this day her weird it is to die and part from life. I, lest pollution taint me in their house, go forth of yonder hall's beloved roof. Enter death. Lo, yonder death, I see him nigh at hand priest of the dead who comes to hale her down to hades halls well hath he kept his time watching this day whereon she needs must die death ha thou at the palace wilt not make room phoebus thou restest the right yet again thou removest the landmarks of gods of gloom and thou makest their honours vain did this not suffice thee to thwart that doom of admetus when all by thy cunning beguiled were the fates, that thou now must be warding the wife with thine hand, made ready the bowstring to strain, though she pledged her from death to redeem with her life, her lord, she, Peleus' child? Apollo, fear not, fair words and justice are with me. Death, justice with thee? What needeth then the bow? Apollo, this? This my want to bear it evermore. Death, yea, and to aid yon house in lawless wise. Apollo, mine heart is heavy for my friend's mischance. Death, 
what wilt thou wrest from me this second corpse apollo nay not that other did i take by force death not why on earth then why not underground apollo she was his ransom she for whom thou comest death yea and will hail her deep beneath the earth apollo take her and go i trow i shall not bend thee death to slay the victim do mine office this apollo nay but to smite with death the ripe for death death ay i discern thy plea thy zeal good sooth apollo and may alcestis never see old age death never should i not love mine honours too apollo too soon or late thou canst but take one life death yet mine the goodlier prize when die the young apollo think royal obsequies if old she die death lo phoebus making laws to shield the rich apollo how sayst thou thou a sophist unawares death would wealth not buy the boon of dying old apollo so then thou wilt not grant this grace to me death nay surely dost not know my wonted way apollo hateful to mortals this and loathed of gods death all things beyond thy rights thou canst not have apollo surely thou shalt forbear though ruthless thou so mighty a man to pharaoh's halls shall come sent of eurystheus forth the courser car from winter dreary lands of thrace to bring guest welcomed in admetus palace here by force yon woman shall he wrest from thee yea thou of me shalt have no thank for this and yet shalt do it and shalt have mine hate exit apollo death talk on talk on no profit shalt thou win this woman down to hades halls shall pass for her i go my sword shall seal her hours for sacred to the nether gods is he he from whose head this sword hath shorn the hair exit death enter chorus dividing to right and left so that the sections answer one another half chorus one what meaneth this hush a front of the hall the home of admetus why voiceless all half chorus two no friend of the house who should speak of its plight is nigh who should bid that we raise the keen for the dead or should tell us that yet on the light alcestis looketh and liveth the queen the daughter of peleus the noblest i ween yea in all men's sight the noblest of women on earth that have been strophe one half chorus one or hearest thou mourning or sighing or beating of hands or the wail of bereaved ones out crying no handmaid stands at the palace gate o healer appear for the dying appear as a bright bird flying twixt the surges of fate half chorus two ah they would not be hushed had the life of her flown half chorus one not forth of the door is the death train gone half chorus two whence cometh thine hope which i boast not mine own half chorus one would the king without pomp of procession have yielded the grave the possession of so dear of so faithful a one antistrophe one half chorus two nor the cup in the gateway appeareth from the spring that they bear to the gate that pollution feareth nor the severed hair in the porch for the dead which the mourner in bitterness sheareth neither beating of hands one heareth on maiden's head half chorus one yet surely is this the appointed day half chorus two ah what wilt thou say half chorus one whereon of her doom she must pass to the tomb half chorus two with a keen pang smart hast thou stabbed mine heart half chorus one it is meet when the good are as flowers plucked away that in sorrow's gloom should the breast of the old tried friend have part chorus strophe two though ye voyage all seas ye shall light on no lands nor on lycia's lees nor ammonian sands whence redemption shall come for the wretched or loosing of death's dread bands doom's imminent slope is a precipice steep in no god is there hope though his altars should weep with the crimson atonement should veil them in clouds of the hecatomb sheep antistrophe two ah once there was one 
where life's light in the eyes of phoebus sun then our darling might rise from the mansions of darkness through portals of hades return to our skies for he raised up the dead ere flashed from the heaven from zeus hand sped that bolt of the leaven but now what remaineth to wait for what hope of her life is given no sacrifice more unrendered remaineth no god but the gore from his altars down reigneth yet healing is none for our ills neither balm that the spirit sustaineth enter handmaid but hither cometh of the handmaid's one weeping the while what tidings shall i hear to grieve at all mischance unto thy lords may be forgiven but if thy lady lives or even now hath passed fain would we know handmaid she liveth and is dead both mayst thou say chorus i so how should the same be dead and live handmaid even now she droopeth gasping out her life chorus noble and stricken how noble she thou losest handmaid his depth of loss he knows not ere it come chorus and hope is no hope left her life to save handmaid none for the day foredoomed constraineth her chorus are all things meet then being done for her handmaid yea ready is her burial attire chorus let her be sure that glorious she dies and noblest woman neath the sun's wide way handmaid noblest how not what tongue will dare gainsay what must the woman be who passeth her how could a wife give honour to her lord more than by yielding her to die for him and this yea all the city knoweth this but what within she did hear thou and marvel for when she knew that the appointed day was come in river water her white skin she bathed and from the cedar chest took forth vesture and jewels and decked her gloriously and stood before the hearth and prayed and said queen for i pass beneath the earth i fall before thee now and never more and pray be mother to my orphans mate with him a loving wife with her a noble husband nor as their mother dieth so may they my children die untimely but with weal in the homeland fill up a life of bliss to all the altars through admetus halls she went with wreaths she hung them and she prayed plucking the while the tresses of the myrtle tearless unsighing and the imminent fate changed not the lovely rose tint of her cheek then to her bower she rushed fell on the bed and there oh there she wept and thus she speaks o couch whereon i loosed the maiden zone for this man for whose sake i die to-day farewell i hate thee not me hast thou lost me only loath to fail thee and my lord i die but thee another bride shall own not more true-hearted happier perchance then falls thereon and kisses all the bed is watered with the flood of melting eyes but having wept her fill of many tears drooping she goeth reeling from the couch yet oft as forth the bower she passed returned and flung herself again upon the couch and the babes clinging to their mother's robes were weeping and she clasped them in her arms fondling now this now that as one death doomed and all the servants neath the roof were weeping pitying their lady but to each she stretched her right hand forth and none there was so mean to whom she spake not and received reply such are the ills admetus home within now had he died he had ended but in scaping he bears a pain that he shall ne'er forget chorus doth not admetus groan for this affliction of such a noble wife to be bereft handmaid ay weeps and clasps his dear one in his arms and prays forsake me not asking the while the impossible for still she wanes and wastes drooping her hand a misery burden weight but yet albeit hardly breathing now to the sun's rays fain would she lift her eyes as never more but for the last time then destined to see the sun's beam and his orb but i will go and make thy presence known for tis not all that love so well their kings as to stand by them in afflictions loyal but from of old my lords were loved of thee exit nine members of the chorus chant successively chorus one o zeus for our lords is there naught but despair no path through the tangle of evils no loosing of chains that have bound them chorus two 
No tidings ; remaineth but rending of hair, And the stricken ones turned to the tomb With the garments of sorrow around them ? CHOROS 3. Even so, even so ! Yet uplift we in prayer Our hands to the gods, for that power from the days everlasting Hath crowned them. CHOROS 4. O Healer king, find thou for Admetus the balm of relief For the captive deliverance. CHOROS 5. Vouchsafe it, vouchsafe it, for heretofore hast thou found out a way. Even now once more pluck back our beloved from Hades' door. Strike down death's hand, red reeking with gore. Chorus 6. Woe's me, woe's me, let the woe dirge ring. A scion of Pheres, alas for thy lot, for love's long severance. Chorus 7. For such things on his sword might a man not fall or knit up his throat in the noose twixt the heaven and the earth that quivereth. Chorus 8. For his dear one, nay, but his dearest of all, shall he see on this day lying dead, while her spirit by Lethe shivereth. Chorus 9. O look, look yonder, where forth of the hall she cometh, and he at her side, whose life by her life she delivereth. Chorus united. Cry, Lanphorean, shrill the keen, Lift up thy voice to wail thy best there dying, and thy queenliest, slow wasting to the gates unseen. Tell me not this, that wedlock brings to them that wed more bliss than woe. I look back to the long ago, I muse on these unhappiest things. Lo, here a king, he forfeiteth the truest heart, the noblest wife, and what shall be henceforth his life? A darkened day, a living death. Enter female attendants, bearing Alcestis, accompanied by Admetus and children. Alcestis, O sun and the day's dear light, and ye clouds through the wheeling heaven in the race everlasting flying. Admetus, he seeth thee and me, two stricken ones, who wrought the gods no wrong that thou shouldest die. Alcestis, O land, O stately height, of mine halls in my bridal couch in Iolcas, my fatherland lying. Admetus, uplift thee, hapless love, forsake me not, and pray the mighty gods in ruth to turn. Alcestis, I see the boat with the oars twin sweeping, and his hand on the pole as in haste a keeping. Charon the ferryman calleth, What ho, wilt thou linger and linger? Hasten, tis thou dost delay me, he crieth with beckoning finger. Admetus, ah, me, a bitter ferrying this thou namest. O evil starred, what woes endure we now? Alcestis, one haileth me, haileth me hence to the mansion of the dead. Dost thou mark not the darkling expansion of the pinions of Hades, the blaze of his eyes neath their caverns outglaring? What wouldst thou? Unhand me, in anguish and pain, by what path am I faring? Admetus, woeful to them that love thee, most to me and to thy babes, sad sharers in this grief. Alcestis, let be, let me sink back to rest me. There is no strength left in my feet. Hades is near, and the night is darkening down on my sight. Darlings, farewell. On the light long may ye look. I have blessed ye, ere your mother to nothingness fleet. Admetus, ah me, for thy word rusheth bitterness o'er me, bitterness passing the anguish of death. Forsake me not now, by the gods I implore thee, by the babes thou wilt orphan. O oh, yield not thy breath. Look up, be of cheer, if thou diest before me is nothingness. Living we a live thine, and we die unto thee. For our hearts are a shrine, wherein for thy love passing word we adore thee. Alcestis, Admetus, for thou seest all my plight. Fain would I speak mine heart's wish ere I die. I, honouring thee and setting thee in place before mine own soul, still to see this light, am dying unconstrained to die for thee. I might have wed what man Thessalian I would, have dwelt wealth crowned in princely halls, yet would not live on, torn away from thee, with orphaned children. Wherefore spared I not the gifts of youth still mine, wherein I joyed, yet she that bear, he that begat, forsook thee, though fair for death their time of life was come, yea, fair, to save their son and die renowned. 
There only one wert thou. No hope there was to get them sons thereafter hadst thou died. So had I lived, and thou to after days. Thou wert not groaning of thy wife bereaved, thy children motherless. Howbeit this some god hath brought to pass, it was to be. Let be. Remember thou what thank is due for this. I never can ask full requital, for naught there is more precious than the life, yet justly due. For these thy babes thou lovest no less than I, if that thine heart be right. Suffer that they have lordship in mine home. Wed not a stepdame to supplant our babes, whose heart shall tell her she is no Alcestis, whose jealous hand shall smite them, thine and mine. Do not, ah, uh, do not this, I pray thee, I, for the new stepdame hateth still the babes of her that's gone with more than viper venom. The boy, his father, is his tower of strength, to whom to speak, of whom to win reply. But, O oh, my child, what girlhood will be thine? To thee what would she be, thy father's yoke-mate? What if with ill report she smirched thy name, and in thy youth's flower marred thy marriage hopes? For thee thy mother ne'er shall deck for bridal, nor hearten thee in travail, O oh, my child. There, where naught gentler than the mother is, for I must die, nor shall it be to mourn, nor on the third day comes on me this bane. Straight way of them that are not shall I be. Farewell, be happy. Now for thee, my lord, abides the boast to have won the noblest wife, for you, my babes, to have sprung from noblest mother. Chorus. Fear not, for I am bold to speak for him. This will he do, and if he be not mad. End of part one. Part two of Alcestis by Euripides, translated by Arthur Sanders Way, eighteen forty seven to nineteen thirty. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part two. Admetus, it shall, it shall be, dread not thou, for thee living I had, and dead mine only wife shalt thou be called nor ever in thy stead shall bride Thessalian hail me as her lord. None is there of a father so high-born, none so for beauty peerless among women. Children enough have I. I pray the gods for joy in these. Our joy in thee is naught. Not for a year's space will I mourn for thee, but long as this my life shall last, dear wife, loathing my mother, hating mine own sire, for in word only, not in deed, they loved me. Thou gavest in ransom for my life thine all of precious, and did save. Do I not well to groan, who lose such yoke-fellow in thee? Revels shall cease, and gatherings at the wine, garlands and song, which want to fill mine house. For never more mine hand shall touch the lyre, nor will I lift up heart to sing to flute of Libya. Thou hast robbed my life of mirth, and wrought by craftsmen's cunning hands thy form imaged upon a couch outstretched shall lie falling whereon and clasping with mine hands calling thy name in fancy shall mine arms hold my beloved though i hold her not a chill delight i wot yet shall i lift the burden from my soul in dreams shalt thou haunt me and gladden sweet to see the loved though but a fleeting presence night revealed but were the tongue and strain of Orpheus mine, to which Demeter's daughter and her lord, and out of Hades by my song to win thee, I had fared down, nor Pluto's hound had stayed me, nor spirit wafter Charon at the oar, or ever I restored thy life to light, yet there look thou for me, when so I die, prepare a home as who shall dwell with me, for in the selfsame cedar chest wherein thou liest, will i bid them lay my bones outstretched beside thee ne'er may i be severed no not in death from thee my one true friend chorus yea i withal will mourn as friend with friend with thee for this thy wife for she is worthy alcestis my child ye yourselves have heard all this have heard your father pledge him ne'er to wed for your oppression and for my dishonour Admetus, yea, now I say it, and I will perform. Alcestis, on these terms take the children from mine hand. Admetus, I take them. 
precious gift from precious hand alcestis be to these babes a mother in my stead admetus sore is their need who are bereft of thee alcestis darlings i should have lived and lo i die admetus ah me what shall i do forlorn of thee alcestis time shall bring healing but the dead is naught admetus take me ah take me with thee to the grave alcestis suffice it that one dies she dies for thee admetus o oh, death of what a wife dost thou bereave me alcestis dark dark mine eyes are drooping heavy laden admetus o oh, i am lost if thou wilt leave me wife alcestis no more i am no more as naught account me admetus uplift thy face forsake not thine own children alcestis sore loath do i yet o oh, farewell my babes admetus look unto them o oh, look alcestis i am no more admetus ah leavest thou us alcestis farewell dies admetus o oh, wretch undone chorus gone gone no more is this admetus wife eumelus woe for my lot to the tomb hath my mother descended descended never again o oh, my father she seeth the light of the sun in anguish she leaves us forsaken the story is ended is ended of her sheltering love and the tale of the motherless life is begun look look on her eyelids her hands drooping nerveless oh hear me oh hear me it is i i beseech thee my mother thine own little own little bird it is i oh i cast me upon thee thy lips are so near me so near me unto mine am i pressing them mother i plead for a word but a word admetus with her who heareth not nor seeth ye and i are stricken with a heavy doom eumelus and i am but a little one father so young and forsaken forsaken forlorn of my mother o oh, hapless a weariful lot shall be mine and thou little maiden my sister the burden hast taken hast taken which thy brother may bear not alone and a weariful lot shall be thine o oh, father of long living love was thy marriage uncherished uncherished thou hast won not the goal of old age with the love of thy youth at thy side for or ever she won to the fullness of days she hath perished hath perished and the home is a wreck and a ruin for thou o my mother hast died chorus admetus this mischance thou needs must bear nor first of mortals thou nor shalt be last to lose a noble wife and be thou sure from us from all this debt is due to die admetus i know it no wise unforeseen this ill hath swooped upon me long i grieve to know it but for to burial must i bear my dead stay ye and tarrying echo back my wail to that dark god whom no drink offerings move and all thessalians over whom i rule i bid take part in mourning for this woman with shaven head and sable shrouding robe and ye which yoke the cars four horsed or steeds of single frontlet shear with steel their manes music of flutes the city through or lyres be none while twelve moons round their circles out for dearer dead nor kinder unto me i shall not bury worthy of mine honour is she for she alone hath died for me exit chorus strophe one o peleus daughter i hail thee i waft thee eternal farewell to thine home where the darkness must veil thee where in hades unsunned thou shalt dwell no dark haired thy grey spirit wafter hath sped not with twy plashing oar woman nobler nor shall speed hereafter to acheron's shore antistrophe one for the seven-stringed shell or for paean unharped shall thy fame be a song when o'er sparta the moon carnean high rideth the whole night long 
and in athens the wealthy and splendid shall thy name on her bard's lips ring such a theme hast thou left to be blended with the lays that they sing strophe two o oh, that the power were but in me from the chambers of hades to light and from streams of coquitus to win thee with the oar of the river of night o oh, dear among women strong-hearted from hades to ransom thy lord never spirit in such wise departed light lie on thee lady the sward and if ever thine husband shall mate him again with a bride in thy stead i will loathe him his children shall hate him the babes of the dead antistrophe two when his mother would not be contented to hide her from him in the tomb nor his grey-haired father consented unholpen he looked on his doom whom they bear the hard-hearted they cared not though hoary their locks were to save thou art gone for thy great love spared not thy blossom of youth from the grave ah may it be mine such communion of hearts tis vouchsafed unto few then ours should be sorrowless union our life days through enter heracles heracles strangers who dwell in this pharaean land say do i find admetus in his home chorus heracles in his home is fairy's son yet say what brings thee to thessalian land that thou shouldst come to this pharaean town heracles a toil for king eurystheus lord of tyrans chorus and whither journeyest to what wanderings yoked heracles for thracian diomedes four-horse chariot chorus how canst thou sure he is unknown to thee heracles unknown to land bistonian fared i never chorus not save by battle may those steeds be won heracles yet flinch i may not from the appointed toils chorus thy life or his a triumph or a grave heracles not this the first time i have run such course chorus what profit is it if thou slay their lord heracles those steeds shall i drive back to tyran's king chorus hard task to set the bit betwixt their jaws heracles that shall i if their nostrils breathe not fire chorus yea but with ravening jaws do they rend men heracles go to thus banquet mountain beasts not horses chorus nay thou shalt see their cribs with gore bespattered heracles whom boasteth he for father he that reared them chorus ares the king of thracia's golden shield heracles thou sayest such toil my fate imposeth still harsh evermore uphillward straining a if i must still in battle close with sons gotten of ares with lycaean first and kickness then and lo i come to grapple the third strife this with yon steeds and their lord but never man shall see alcmene's child quailing before the hand of any foe chorus lo there himself the ruler of the land admetus cometh forth his palace hall enter admetus admetus hail o thou sprung from zeus and perseus blood heracles admetus hail thou too thessalia's king admetus hail would i were yet thy good heart i know heracles wherefore for morning shaven show'st thou thus admetus this day must i commit to earth a corpse heracles now heaven forfend thou mournst for children dead admetus in mine home live the babes whom i begat heracles sooth death ripe were thy sire if he be gone admetus he liveth and my mother heracles heracles surely oh surely not thy wife admetus admetus twofold must be mine answer touching her heracles or hath she died sayst thou or liveth yet admetus she is and she is not here lies my sorrow heracles nothing the more i know dark sayings thine admetus know'st not the doom whereon she needs must light heracles i know she pledged herself to die for thee admetus how lives she then if she to this consented heracles 
Mourn not thy wife ere dead. Abide the hour. Admetus. Dead is the doomed, and no more is the dead. Heracles. Diverse are these, to be and not to be. Admetus. This, Heracles, thy sentence, that is mine. Heracles. But now, why weepst thou? What dear friend is dead? Admetus. A woman. Hers the memory we mourn. Heracles. Some stranger born? Or nigh of kin to thee? Admetus. A stranger born, yet near and dear to us. Heracles. How died a stranger then in house of thine? Admetus. An orphan here she dwelt, her father dead. Heracles. Would we had found thee mourning not, Admetus. Admetus. I so? What purpose lurketh neath thy word? Heracles. On will I to another host's hearth welcome. Admetus. It cannot be. May no such evil come. Heracles. A burden unto mourners comes the guest. Admetus. Dead are the dead. But enter thou mine house. Heracles. Twere shame to banquet in the house of weeping. Admetus. Aloof the guest bowers are where we will lodge thee. Heracles. Let me pass on, and have my thanks unmeasured. Admetus. Unto another's hearth thou canst not go. To an attendant. Ho thou, lead on. Open the guest bowers looking away from these our chambers. Tell my stewards to set on me in plenty. Shut with all the mid-court doors. It fits not that the guests, the while they feast, hear wailings and be vexed. Exit Heracles. Chorus. What dost thou? Such affliction at the door and guess for thee, Admetus? Art thou mad? Admetus. But had I driven him from my home and city who came my guest, then hadst thou praised me more? Nay, sooth, for mine affliction so had grown no less, and more inhospitable I. And to mine ills were added this beside, that this my home were called guest-hating hall. Yea, and myself have proved him kindliest host, Whene'er to Argos' thirsty plain I fared. Chorus. Why hide, then, the dread presence in the house when came a friend? Thyself hast named him friend. Admetus. Never had he been one to pass my doors, had he one wit of mine afflictions known. To some I wot, not wise herein I seem, nor wilt thou praise. But mine halls have not learned to thrust away, nor to dishonor guests. Chorus. Strophe one, halls thronged of the guests ever welcome, O dwelling of a hero, forever the home of the free, the lord of the lyre strings sweet beyond telling, Apollo hath deigned to sojourn in thee, amid thine habitations a shepherd of sheep, the flocks of Admetus he scorned not to keep, while the shepherd's bridal strain, soft swelling from his pipe, pealed over the slant sloped lee. Anti strophe one. And the spotted lynxes, for joy of thy singing, mixed with thy flocks. And from Othrus's bell trooped tawny lions, the witchery winging notes brought dancing around thy shell. Phoebus, the dappled fawn from the shadow of the tall tressed pines tripping forth to the meadow, beating time to the chime of the rapture ringing music, with light feet tranced by its spell. Strophe 2 wherefore the flocks of my lord unnumbered by the bebian mere fair rippling stray where the steeds of the sun halt darkness cumbered by molossian marches far away the borders lie of his golden grain and his rolling stretches of pasture plain and the havenless beach aegean hath slumbered under pelion long neath this piece of his sway antistrophe two and now with the tears from his eyes fast raining, thrown wide are his palace doors to the guest, while newly his heart neath its burden is straining for the wife that hath died in his hall's distress. For to honour's heights are the high-born lifted, and the good are with truest wisdom gifted, and there broods on mine heart bright trust unwaning that the god-reverer shall yet be blessed. Admetus, O kindly presence of Phoreian men, this corpse even now with all things meet my servants bear on their shoulders to the tomb and pyre wherefore as custom is hail ye the dead on the last journey as she goeth forth chorus 
lo i behold thy sire with aged foot advancing and attendants in their hands bear ornaments to deck the dead withal enter pheres with attendants bearing gifts pheres i come in thine affliction sorrowing son a noble wife and virtuous hast thou lost none will gainsay yet these calamities we needs must bear how hard to bear so ever receive these ornaments and let her pass beneath the earth well may the corpse be honoured of her who for thy life's sake died my son who made me not unchilded left me not forlorn of thee to pine in woeful eld in all her sister's eyes she hath crowned her life with glory daring such a deed as this o saviour of my son who us upraisest in act to fall all hail may bliss be thine even in hades thus to wed i say profiteth men or nothing worth is marriage admetus bidden of me thou comest not to this burial nor count i thine the presence of a friend thine ornaments she never shall put on she shall be buried needing naught of thine thou grieve thou shouldst have grieved in my death hour thou stoodst aloof the old didst leave the young to die and wilt thou wail upon this corpse true father of my body thou wast not nor she that said she bare me and was called my mother gave me birth a bondman blood to thy wife's breast was i brought privily put to the test thou showest who thou art and i account me not thy true-born son peerless of men and soulless cowardice so old and standing on the verge of life yet hadst no will yet hadst no heart to die for thine own son ye suffered her a woman not of our house whom i with righteous cause might count alone my mother and my father yet here was honour hadst thou dared the strife in dying for thy son a paltry space to cling to life in any wise was left then had i lived and she through days to come nor i left lorn should thus mine ills bemoan yet all that may the fortunate betide fell to thy lot in manhood's prime a king me hadst thou son and heir unto thine house so that thou wast not dying like to leave a childless home for stranger folk to spoil nor canst thou say that flouting thy grey hairs i gave thee o'er to death whose reverence for thee was passing word and this the thank that thou and she that bear me render me wherefore make haste beget thee other sons to foster thy grey hairs to compass thee with death's observance and lay out thy corpse not i with this mine hand will bury thee for thee dead am i if i see the light another saviour found i call me son to her and loving fosterer of her age for not the aged pray for death's release plaining of age and weary wearing time let death draw near who then would die not one no more is eld a burden unto them chorus oh hush suffice the affliction at the doors o son infuriate not thy father's soul pheres son whom thinkst thou some lydian slave or phrygian bought with thy money thus beratest thou what knowst thou not that i thessalian am sprung from thessalian sire free man true born this insolence passeth hurling malapert words on me not lightly thus shalt thou come off thee i begat and nurtured of mine house the heir no debt is mine to die for thee not from our sires such custom we receive that sires for sons should die no greek law this born for thyself wast thou to fortune good or evil all thy dues from us thou hast or many folk thou rulest wide domains shall i leave thee to me my fathers left them what is my wrong my robbery of thee for me die thou not i die not for thee thou joyest to see light shall thy father joy not sooth i account our time beneath the earth long and our life space short yet is it sweet shamelessly hast thou fought against thy death thy life is but transgression of thy doom and murder of thy wife my cowardice this from thee dastard worsted by a woman who died for thee the glorious gallant youth cunning device hast thou devised to die never cajoling still wife after wife to die for thee and dost revile thy friends who will not so and thou the coward thou peace e'en bethink thee if thou lov'st thy life so all love theirs 
thou if thou speakest evil of us shalt hear much evil and that true chorus ye have said too much thou now and he before refrain old sire from railing on thy son admetus say on say on i have said if hearing truth gall thee thou shouldst not have done me wrong pheres i had done more wrong had i died for thee admetus what for the young and old is death the same pheres one life to live not twain this is our due admetus have thy desire one life outlasting zeus pheres dost curse thy parents who hast had no wrong admetus i whom i marked love sick for dateless life pheres what art not burying her in thine own stead admetus a token dastard of thy cowardice pheres i did her not to death thou canst not say it admetus mayst thou feel thy need of me some day pheres woo many women that the more may die admetus this taunt strikes thee tis thou wast loath to die pheres sweet is yon sun-god's light yea it is sweet admetus base is thy spirit and unmeet for men pheres no aged corpse thou bearest inly laughing admetus yet shalt thou die in ill fame when thou diest pheres not reck i of ill speaking o'er my grave admetus ah me how full of shamelessness is eld pheres not shameless she but senseless hast thou found her admetus be gone lead me to bury this my dead pheres i go her murderer will bury her thou shalt yet answer for it to her kin surely acastus is no more a man if he of thee claim not his sister's blood exit pheres admetus avaunt with her that kenneleth with thee childless grow old as ye deserve while lives your child ye shall not come beneath one roof with me if need were to renounce by heralds thy fatherhood i had renounced it now let us for we must bear the present ill pass on to lay our dead upon the pyre chorus alas for the loving and daring farewell to the noblest and best may hermes conduct thee down faring kindly and hades to rest receive thee if any atonement for ills even there may be tied to the good o thine be enthronement by hades bride exeunt omnes in funeral procession end of part two part three of alcestis by euripides translated by arthur sanders way eighteen forty seven to nineteen thirty part three enter servant servant full many a guest from many a land which came unto admetus dwelling have i known have set before them meat but never guest more pestilent received i to this hearth who first albeit he saw my master mourning entered and passed the threshold unashamed then nowise courteously received the fair found with us though our woeful plight he knew but what we brought not hectoring bade us bring the ivy cup uplifts he in his hands and swills the darkling mother's fiery blood till the wine's flame enwrapped him heating him then did he wreathe his head with myrtle sprays dissonant howling diverse strains were heard for he sang on regardless all of ills darkening admetus house we servants wept our mistress yet we showed not to the guest eyes tear bedewed for so admetus bade and now within the house must i be feasting this guest a lawless thief a bandit rogue she from the house hath passed i followed not nor stretched the hand nor wailed unto my mistress farewell who was to me in all the household a mother for from ills untold she saved us assuaging her lord's wrath do i not well to loathe this guest intruder on our griefs enter heracles heracles ho oh, fellow why this solemn brooding look the servant should not lower upon the guest but welcome him with kindly beaming cheer thou seeing here in presence thy lord's friend with visage sour and cloud of knitted brows receivest him fretting o'er an alien grief 
hither to me, that wiser thou mayst grow. The lot of men its nature knowest thou? I trow not. How shouldst thou? Give ear to me. From all mankind the debt of death is due. Nor of all mortals is there one that knows if through the coming morrow he shall live. For trackless is the way of fortune's feet, not to be taught, nor won by art of man. This hearing, then, and learning it from me, make merry, drink. The life from day to day account thine own, all else in fortune's power. Honor with all the sweetest of the gods to men, the Cyprian queen, a gracious goddess. These thoughts put by, and hearken to my words, if words of wisdom unto thee they seem. I trow it hence with sorrow overwrought pass through yon doors and quaff the wine with me thy brows with garlands bound full well i wot from all this lowering spirit prison pent thine anchor shall sir beaker's plash upheave what man the mortal must be mortal minded so for your solemn whites of knitted brows for each and all if thou for judge wilt take me life is not truly life but mere affliction servant all this we know but now are we in plight not meet for laughter and for revelry heracles the woman dead is alien born grieve not exceeding much yet live the household's lords servant live quotha knowst thou not the house's ills heracles yea if thy master lied not unto me servant guest fain he is ah guest fain overmuch heracles a stranger dead and no guest cheer for me servant oh yea an alien she or much an alien heracles ha huh. was he keeping some affliction back servant go thou in peace our lord's ills are for us heracles grief for a stranger such talk heralds not servant else had i not sore vexed beheld thy revelling heracles how have i sorry handling of mine host servant thou camest in hour unmeet for welcoming for grief is on us and thou seest shorn hair and vesture of black robes heracles but who hath died not of the children one or grey-haired sire servant nay but admetus wife is dead o guest heracles how sayst thou ha huh, even then ye gave me welcome servant for shame he could not thrust thee from his doors heracles o oh, hapless what a help me hast thou lost servant we have all perished and not she alone heracles i felt it when i saw his tear-drowned eyes his shaven hair and face yet he prevailed saying he bare a stranger friend to burial i passed this threshold in mine heart's despite and drank in halls of him that loves the guest when thus his plight and am i revelling with head wreathed decked that thou shouldst ne'er have told when such affliction lay upon the home where doth he bury her where shall i find her servant by the straight path that leads larissa ward shall see the hewn stone tomb without the walls heracles o oh, much enduring heart and soul of mine now show what son the lady of tyrans bare electrion's child acmene unto zeus for i must save the woman newly dead and set alcestis in this house again and render to admetus good for good i go the sable vestured king of corpses death will i watch for and shall find i trow drinking the death draught hard beside the tomb and if i lie in wait and dart from ambush and seize and with mine arms coil compass him none is there shall deliver from mine hands his straining sides or ere he yields his prey yea though i miss the quarry and he come not unto the blood clot to the sunless homes down will i fare of cory and her king and make demand i doubt not i shall lead alcestis up and give to mine host's hands who to his halls received nor drave me thence albeit smitten with affliction sore but hid it like a prince respecting me who is more guest fain of thessalians who in all hellas oh he shall not say that one so princely showed a base man kindness exit enter admetus with chorus and attendants returning from the funeral admetus o oh, hateful returning 
O hateful to see drear halls full of yearning for the lost, ah me! What aim or what rest have I, silence or speech, of what help shall they be? Would God I were dead! Oh, I came from the womb to a destiny dread. Ah, those in the tomb, how I envy them, how I desire them and long to abide in their home. To mine eyes nothing sweet is the light of the heaven, nor the earth to my feet. Such a helpmeet is riven by death from my side, and my darling to Hades the spoiler hath given. Chorus. Pass on thou, and hide thee in thy chambers. Edmetus. Ah, woe! Chorus. Wail the griefs that betide thee. How canst thou but so? Edmetus. O oh God! Chorus. Thou hast passed through deep waters of anguish. I know it, I know. Edmetus. Alas and alas! Chorus. No help bringeth this to thy love in that place. Edmetus. Woe! Chorus. Bitter it is, the face of a wife well beloved for ever and ever to miss. Admetus, thou hast stricken mine heart where the wound will not heal. What is worse than to part from the loving and leal? Would God I had wedded her not, home bliss with Alcestis to feel. Oh, I envy the lot of the man without wife, without child. Single wrought is the strand of his life. No soul crushing burden of sorrow, no strength overmastering strife but that children should sicken that gloom of despair over bride bed should thicken what spirit can bear when childless unwedded a man through life's calm journey might fare chorus thee fortune hath met strong wrestler and throne yet no bounds hast thou set edmetus woe's me chorus to thy moan o oh, thy burden is heavy edmetus alas chorus yet endure it thou art not alone not thou art the first of bereaved ones admetus ah me chorus such tempest hath burst upon many ere thee unto each his mischance when the surges roll up from calamity's sea admetus o long grief and pain for beloved ones past why didst thou restrain when myself i had cast down into her grave with the noblest to lie peace lulled at the last not one soul but two had been hades prey souls utterly true together for a which together o'er waves of the underworld mere had passed this day chorus of my kin was there one and the life's light failed in his halls of a son one meet to be wailed his only beloved howbeit the manhood within him prevailed and the ills heaven sent as a man did he bear though by this was he bent unto silvered hair far on in life's path without sun for his remnant of weakness to share admetus oh how can i tread thy threshold fair home how shelter mine head neath my roof now the doom of the gods dice changeth ah oh, me what change upon all things is come for with torches aflame of the pelian pine and with bride song i came in that hour divine upbearing the hand of a wife thine hand o darling mine followed revellers raising acclaim ever broke from the lips of them praising of the dead as they spoke and of me how the noble the children of kings love join neath his yoke but for bridal song is the wail for the dead and for white robed throng black vesture hath led me to halls where the ghost of delight lieth couched on a desolate bed chorus to the trance of thy bliss sudden anguish was brought never lesson like this to thine heart had been taught yet thy life hast thou won and thy soul hast delivered from death is it not thy wife hath departed love tender and true hast she left stricken hearted wherein is this new hath death not unyoked from the chariot of love full many ere you admetus friends i account the fortune of my wife happier than mine albeit it seems not so for naught of grief shall touch her any more and glorious rest she finds from many toils but i unmeet to live my doom outrun shall drag out bitter days i know it now how shall i bear to enter this mine home speaking to whom and having speech of whom shall i find joy of entering whither turn me 
the solitude within shall drive me forth when so i see my wife's couch tenantless and seats whereon she sat and neath the roof all foul the floor when on my knees my babes falling shall weep their mother servants moan the peerless mistress from the mansion lost all this within for from the world without shall bridles of thessalians chase me throngs where women gossip for i shall not bear on those companions of my wife to look and if a foe i have thus shall he scoff lo there who basely liveth dared not die but whom he wedded gave a coward's ransom and scaped from hades count ye him a man he hates his parents though himself was loath to die such ill report besides my grief shall mine be ah what profit is it to live o friends in evil fame in evil plight chorus strophe one i have mused on the words of the wise of the mighty in song i have lifted mine heart to the skies i have searched all truth with mine eyes but naught more strong than fate have i found there is naught in the tablets of thrace neither drugs whereof orpheus taught nor in all that apollo brought to asclepius race when the herbs of healing he severed and out of their anguish delivered the pain distraught antistrophe one there is none other goddess beside to the altars of whom no man draweth near nor hath cried to her image nor victim hath died averting her doom o goddess more mighty for ill come not upon me than in days overpast for his will even zeus may in no wise fulfil unholpen of thee steel is molten as water before thee but never relenting came o'er thee who are ruthless still strophe two thee friend hath the goddess gripped from her hands never wrestler hath slipped yet be strong to endure never morning shall bring our beloved returning from the nether gloom up to the light yea the heroes of gods begotten they fade into darkness forgotten in death's chill night dear was she in days ere we lost her dear yet though she lie with the dead none nobler shall earth mother foster than the wife of thy bed antistrophe two not as mounds of the dead which have died so account we the tomb of thy bride but o oh, let the worship and honour that we render to gods rest upon her unto her let the wayfarer pray as he treadeth the pathway that trendeth aside from the highway and bendeth at her shrine he shall say her life for her lord's was given with the blessed now abides she on high hail queen show us grace from thine heaven even so shall they cry but lo alcmene's son as seemeth yonder admetus to thine hearth is journeying enter heracles leading a woman wholly veiled heracles unto a friend behoveth speech outspoken admetus not to hide within the breast murmurs unvoiced i came mid thine affliction fair claim was mine to rank amid thy friends thou toldst me not how lay thy wife a corpse thou gavest me guest welcome in thine home making pretence of mourning for a stranger i wreathed mine head i spilled unto the gods drink offerings in a stricken house even thine i blame thee thus mishandled yea i blame thee yet nowise is my will to gall thy grief but wherefore hither turning back i come this will i tell take guard for me this maid till leading hitherward the thracian mares i come from slaughter of bistonia's lord but if not that for i would fain return i give her then for service of thine halls prize of hard toil unto mine hands she came for certain men i found but now arraying in athlete strife toil-worthy for all comers once i have won and bring this victor's mead horses there were for them to take which won the light foot's triumph but for hero strife boxing and wrestling oxen were the guerdon a woman made it richer shame it seemed to hap thereon and slip this glorious gain but as i said this woman be thy care for no thief's prize but toil achieved i bring her yea one day thou perchance shalt say twas well admetus not flouting thee nor counting among foes my wife's unhappy fate i hid from thee but this had been but grief appiled on grief hadst thou sped hence to be another's guest and mine own ills suffice me to bewail but for the woman if in any wise it may be prince bid some thessalian guard her i pray thee who hath suffered not as i 
and fairi many a friend and host thou hast awaken not remembrance of my grief i could not seeing her mine halls within be tearless add not hurt unto mine hurt burden enough am i by mine affliction nay in mine house where should a young maid lodge for vesture and adorning speak her young what neath the men's roof shall her lodging be and how unsullied dwelling with young men not easy is it heracles to curb the young herein do i take thought for thee or shall i ope to her my dead wife's bower how cause her to usurp my lost love's bed twofold reproach i dread from mine own folk lest one should say that traitor to her kindness i fall upon another woman's bed and of the dead to me most reverence worthy needs must i take great heed but woman thou whoso thou art know that thy body's stature is as alcestis and thy form as hers ah me lead for the god's sake from my sight this woman take not my captivity captive for as i look on her methinks i see my wife she stirs mine heart with turmoil fountains of tears burst from mine eyes o oh, wretched i now first i taste this griefful bitterness chorus in sooth thy fortune can i not commend yet must we brook a god's gift whoso cometh heracles o oh, that such might i had as back to bring to light thy wife from nether gloom abodes and to bestow this kindness upon thee admetus fain wouldst thou well i know but wherefore this it cannot be the dead to light should come heracles or shoot not now the mark but bear all bravely admetus easier to exhort than suffer and be strong heracles but what thy profit though for a thou mourn admetus i too know this yet love constraineth me heracles love for the lost i that draws forth the tear admetus she hath undone me more than words can tell heracles a good wife hast thou lost who shall gainsay admetus so that this man hath no more joy in life heracles time shall bring healing now is thy grief young admetus time time o oh, yea if this thy time be death heracles a wife and yearning for new love shall calm thee admetus hush what sayest thou i could not think thereon heracles how wilt not wed but widowed keep thy couch admetus lives not the woman that shall couch with me heracles looks thou that this shall profit aught the dead admetus i needs must honour her where'er she be heracles good good yet one with folly so might charge thee admetus so be it so thou call me bridegroom never heracles i praise thee for that leal thou art to her admetus death be my meed if i betray her dead heracles receive this woman now these halls within admetus nay i beseech by zeus that did beget thee heracles yet shalt thou err if thou do not this thing admetus yet shall mine heart be grief stung if i do it heracles yield thee this grace may prove perchance a duty admetus o oh, that in strife thou ne'er hadst won this maid heracles yet thy friend's victory is surely thine admetus well said yet let the woman hence depart heracles yea if need be first look well need it be admetus needs must save thou wilt else be wroth with me heracles i too know what i do insisting thus admetus have then thy will thy pleasure is my pain heracles yet one day shalt thou praise me only yield admetus to attendants lead ye her if mine halls must needs receive heracles not to thy servants hands will i commit her admetus thou lead her in then if it seems thee good heracles nay but in thine hands will i place her thine admetus i will not touch her open stand my doors heracles unto thy right hand only trust i her admetus 
O king, thou forcest me, I will not this. Heracles, be strong, stretch forth thine hand and touch thy guest. Admetus, I stretch it forth as to a headless gorgon. Heracles, hast her? Admetus, I have. Heracles, yea, guard her. Thou shalt call the child of Zeus one day a noble guest. Raises the veil and discloses Alcestis. Look on her, if in aught she seems to thee like to thy wife. Step forth from grief to bliss. Admetus, what shall I say? Gods, marvel this unhoped for. My wife do I behold in very sooth. Or doth some god-sent mockery joy distract me? Heracles, not so. But this thou seest is thy wife. Admetus, what if this be some phantom from the shades? Heracles, no ghost upraiser hast thou tamed for guest? Admetus, how? Whom I buried do I see, my wife? Heracles, doubt not, yet mightst thou well mistrust thy fortune. Admetus, as wife, as living may I touch, address her? Heracles, speak to her. All thou didst desire thou hast. Admetus, O oh, face, O oh, form of my beloved wife, past hope I have thee, who ne'er thought to see thee. Heracles, thou hast, may no god of thy bliss be jealous. Admetus, O oh, scion nobly born of Zeus most high, blessings on thee, the father who begat thee keep thee, thou only hast restored my fortunes, how didst thou bring her from the shades to light? Heracles, I closed in conflict with the lord of spirits. Admetus, where, say'st thou, didst thou fight this fight with death? Heracles, from ambush by the tomb mine hands ensnared him. Admetus, now wherefore speechless standeth thus my wife? Heracles, tis not vouchsafe thee yet to hear her voice, ere to the powers beneath the earth she be unconsecrated and the third day come but lead her in and just man as thou art henceforth admetus reverence still the guest farewell but i must go and work the work set by the king the son of Thenelus. admetus abide with us a sharer of our hearth heracles hereafter this now must i hasten on admetus O oh, prosper thou, and come again in peace. Through all my realm I publish to my folk that for these blessings dances they array, and that atonement fumes from altars rise, for now to happier days than those o'er past have we attained. I own me blessed indeed. Chorus. O oh, the works of the gods, in manifold forms they reveal them, manifold things unhoped for the gods to accomplishment bring and the things that we looked for the gods deign not to fulfil them and the paths undiscerned of our eyes the gods unseal them so fell this marvellous thing exeunt omnes end of part three end of alcestis by euripides translated by arthur sanders way eighteen forty seven to nineteen thirty